Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Thank you for coming and thank you for uh, inviting me. What on earth is it that moves you? In a way, with that one question, um, that's for me what I'm doing. That's my job, asking that question to the people uh, with who I'm working with. You can see also interior architecture as a medium too, the tool that will, I will tell you later on. But I think in the word interior architecture, the in is the most important part, not architecture, the in. Standing in the world, in the dynamic, in people, in the body, in the mind, in connection, and so on. And I think that's um, what our job makes so beautiful. I, I suppose that we almost all are interior architects, so I can say it without making other people jealous, but what a lucky people we are if we can do such a thing as our job, isn't it? So what on earth is it that moves you? Let's say that's a question uh, through the whole process of designing. But of course, that's not such an easy question. Uh, if you ask me, I have to think. And every day, maybe I have another answer. Twenty years ago, I started with the design office. Then, um, 12 years ago, I started as a teacher in St. Lucas. And then, four years ago, I uh, started with the research. The strange thing is that the moment I started to do research, and the first two years was uh, most of all the time uh, listening to people who are doing research. Um, those three actions, those three jobs I did, came together. And nowadays, uh, I can't say I'm for the moment I'm doing that or that. It's all mixed up. And in a way, my dream would be to have one building where my office is, where my teaching is, where my research is, and all the colleagues, and that's all together. That there's no, no boundary anymore. Spoken about boundaries, I think also that the identity of an interior architect, that's one of the, the subjects we, we are talking about here, uh, it's not about the boundary where our job is ending. I think it's uh, the starting point. That's our identity, where we start. And I agree with Joker, it starts very close to the people. I almost can touch my clients. It's forbidden maybe, but uh, it's so close. It's almost kind of a, a naked relationship, like you're doing, like a doctor who said, put off your clothes and I, I will investigate you. I think we have a little bit the same job. Um, we are asking questions. We are um, um, yeah, looking in their inner world uh, and their dreams. So we have to do it with, I think, a big respect um, for all those people. So those three elements are uh, really working together. In the uh, first, I have four um, pictures where I explain a little bit kind of a theory. Eh? But then I will tell you all kind of stories, uh, all kind of projects um, from the real world. Eh? Um, but in a way, uh, those three are really connected to each other. They are broadening each other, understanding, uh, injecting each other, intensify, you can see it, the challenging, deepening, more, making more explicit, actualized. So for me, it's very important. And I hope that uh, in a couple of years, the school where I'm working uh, in is not a school anymore, Pro from a little bit apart from the world. I think the most amazing part of our job is not you, you can't find it in the school. It's the chemistry between you and the client. It's all the things uh, that's coming up that you didn't expect, that you, you couldn't plan. And in a school context, sometimes you have to invent all those um, playing rules around. Um, and that makes uh, 
makes it not natural. Um, I think life is more beautiful than your most beautiful dream. I'm com becoming very romantic. That wasn't my intention. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I have um, four, uh, let's say, statements or, or thoughts. Um, one is the world is changing constantly. Interior architecture is a medium to discover, so not a goal. Interior architecture is a medium to develop. And students increase movement. Um, it's strange, but uh, for me, movement is, let's say, the keyword of my lecture. But almost in every lecture uh, from yesterday on and this morning, I saw that word and I, hit, I heard that word, movement. The world is changing constantly. I think it's nothing new if I'm telling that. Um, everybody told about that uh, very fast change. But I think it's, uh, it's very natural. And it's in one way strange that we are so afraid of the change. Because it's our nature and it's what the, the world is doing on every scale. Um, and it's moving very fast. I think, I'm not so old, but I think that today it's maybe the most fast movement in, in the whole history. And that gives us uh, our job, interior architects, uh, a very difficult uh, goal. How can we, let's say, facilitate that movement? How can we help people in their movement? Or maybe also, how can we challenge people to move? And for me, that's my job. Um, when we work with our clients, uh, we don't present our um, projects. We work with them. So every time that we are coming together, we work for about three hours, certainly in the beginning. Because if I ask them, what is it that moves you, I don't ask it to them. That's a stupid question. But for a lot of people, um, it's not so easy to know what they are doing, uh, of what they want, uh, what their dream is in the future, or all kind of dreams. And so we are looking with them um, and work with them to discover uh, all kind of possibilities and what's moving them. And moving in a way, literally, you, you move, uh, in a way that your mind is moving, developing, evaluating, but also uh, what's touching you. And um, if, if we start as an interior architect, well, we never start as an interior architect. I think there's always a kind of a movement, a change before us. The moment people come to us to, and they have a question, is already a long process before. So we are, we are just but a part of that process. And after our work is done, let's say, it's also a long process. So we are a little part of it. And it's good to, to be aware of that. And um, I think the, the part we can add in that biggest story, in a change, um, we are playing with the form. Uh, as you see there, I think it's form, people, identity. People are changing, so they need another form to communicate, to live in. And uh, their identity will change. Or they are, uh, their identity is changing, so they um, need another form or form is changing, so they create another identity. It's a, a dynamic um, circle, not linear, um, that constantly is moving. And how can we help that movement? How can we do it? There is no start, there's no ending, I think. Uh, um, in the beginning, if we are working with, those, uh, with our clients, um, we always try, we are doing private projects as well as public projects. With the private projects, we ask everybody to join, the children, sometimes the grandparents, uh, the neighbors, I don't know, people who are in a way connected with a house. 
in public projects, uh, it's more clear, of course, that we are trying to bring together all kind of people who are closer, close to that project. And together with them, we are looking the question after the question. Somebody said it yesterday or this morning. We are helping them to broaden their, I their ideas, their vision, to deepen some keywords, uh, and to inspire them. And in that way, we already start to, um, to design. But we, we design all kinds of possible and impossible, and maybe more impossible, uh, spatial uh, scenarios. So we are using our skills as a designer, not to find an answer, not to answer the first question, but to uh, help people to communicate and to discover maybe some uh, patterns, to discover some things that people don't uh, speak easily about. And we hope in that way to reveal possibilities um, and understand, we and them, the essence of the question. So we are really working together. And in that way, at that moment, uh, I am a facilitator, not more than that. Another thing, interior architecture as a medium to develop, that process that we started before, uh, that continues. Thanks to doing research, I discovered that, in a way, our whole life is one research, is one trial and error, and um, even if we build something, we have to be free, I think, to some months later, to change it, to rebuild it, to interfere already. And so, on a more architectural uh, level, we have some uh, keywords, some things that we are, uh, we are very important for us. Uh, confrontation. I think it's uh, very important as an interior architect to create a kind of a safe space for people that the fragility can be there of human being, uh, that they uh, feel safe. But on the other hand, we only do that, they fell asleep, they don't move anymore. Uh, we, I think it's also our job to, to confront them, to challenge them. And not only doing things that are functional or easily uh, going on. A second thing is uh, temporality is becoming more and more important for us. Uh, we are not fighting uh, time or we, we, don't, we don't want to uh, be there for hundreds of years. Uh, I think my first public project, uh, 12 years old, it's really time, I wrote to, to the owner, it's time to change it. The, 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 the environment, the context changed so much that it's not uh, accurate anymore. Please do something with it. So the freedom of evolution, is, I think, is very important. Another thing is the unpredictable. I think almost in every project I will show, we had, we, that's the, the, the commissioner and, and the, the designers and all the people who were working on the project, we had some, some intentions. And I think always the same, a lot of the intentions didn't work, but a lot of other qualities came up. And uh, that's, let's say, the beauty of our job and the beauty of life that you can uh, react and act uh, in, in that uh, change. Transition is also a very important word for us, that uh, you're not there forever in that space. So there's also always a before and an after, and maybe is that before the entry is maybe more important to, to develop, to design than the room or the building. Uh, but you go in the building and you go out. And I think that's good to develop a house or a building uh, with that uh, knowledge. And then to go in that movement, multi-layered, is also a very important keyword. Uh, that's for all kind of people, for all kind of uh, moments. There is a story that you can find in the place that you can discover that can touch uh, you. And why is it so important to, um, to bring the students in that real world? I think 
they uh, increase that movement. They bring you uh, more to the future. Um, and I, I said it before, and it's also what I'm doing. I'm al al always never teach anymore in St. Lucas, in the school. I always take my students out to a project that we are doing at that moment, um, and we are working there. We are seeing what, what's happening there. We are meeting the, the owners, the people around, the neighbors, and uh, that's the environment where I think that they are learning the most from the little things uh, and from the big, 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 uh, sometimes uh, surprises. Um, also something that's very interesting uh, if you're doing research, that you learn that uh, failure is as interesting as success. So the moment I was designer, only designer, uh, I, I wanted that a project uh, was a success. And if it failed, I thought, oh my God, what have I to tell now to the clients? But now I see that it's no problem. If you, um, if you um, make a project, a project so um, movable, then it can, if it doesn't work like we all thought it would work, you can change it and, and, and develop it further on. So failure in that way is a way to learn. That's here the, let's say, the mission, or maybe in, in a short uh, text, um, what our office is doing. Yeah. Uh, I will read it. Interior architecture is a medium and not a goal. It's a process of designing by research, a process of new opportunities and essential needs, a process of the environment and the inhabitants, as well on a large as a small scale, as well with the fundamental as with small interventions, interventions, as well in the complexity of the whole as in the refinement of the detail. A house of a building of a place gives space to unload and to upload. A house challenges and gives protection. A house creates space and time. Living is changing. In Dutch, uh, in English, living is as well uh, from life and also from uh, your, ha your house. In Dutch, we have for living the world, uh, the, the word uh, leven and wonen. That's different. And I think it's good that in English, it's one word. Um, I will sit there now. Uh, maybe the light can a little bit be more. Um, It would be great if we all can enter in um, the projects now. The first uh, thing I want to show you is uh, a chapel. We had to build for um, 30 monks of more than 80 years old. Um, and they said to me, in a couple of years we will be all dead. Um, our monastery will be empty. Uh, but we want to give something for the youth. Please make us a new chapel. Or redesign our old chapel for the future. Um, and I ask them, okay, what's your program? What, who's your target group? Uh, and so on and so on. And what is for you new? Yeah? Uh, and what in a way is now the essence of your life and what specifically you want to translate for the future. So we worked, I think, for more than a year together uh, looking uh, for all those answers. And it was incredible how um, new and strong and uh, surprising all those old monks of eight years old were. I think they were more, they were younger than my students in mind. So what you see here is uh, that we built in their old chapel a new chapel. They wanted a space for young people where uh, they could find or they could look for their spirituality. They didn't want those monks 
to give an answer. They have an answer for themselves, that's clear. They are all Catholic uh, monks, Salesian. So for them, it's very clear what the, the answer is uh, for their own choice. But they say, okay, a white paper, uh, give the youth a chance to look it out. So what you see there is a white space, it's very high, let's say that uh, in reality, it's a bit the same as here, I can almost touch that line. You come in, it's uh, in sand, and uh, normally you um, do out your shoes. So you're bare feet there, and I think bare feet is almost the same as naked. And you don't see anything, except maybe that uh, lighting element. That's a bit experience if you come in there. No noise, nothing to see, but yourself. Um, one of the monks who was a lot of times there told me um, after one year that the, the chapel is there, he said it's very strange that if people are there for one, one hour and they come out and they are talking about the chapel, they're all telling other stories. Because the, and that's strange, because there's nothing to see there but a white surface. And he said, I discovered after a time that in a way they were telling their story. For the one person, that's freedom, all that white. For the other person, it's very, very narrow and you, you, you can't breathe anymore. You can't visit it in the, in the way that you can go in for 10 minutes and then leave. No, that's not uh, the code that those monks gave to that space. If you're coming, you're, everybody's welcome, but at least for an hour that you can experience, that you can feel yourself changing and uh, maybe fighting with the science and then uh, accepting the science and then doing something with the science. But what can you do? Um, under the sand there is a red floor, so you can use the floor as a kind of uh, uh, a writing table, but you can moving away very, very quickly, so you, you can fail. Um, and all those panels, um, you can open them if you want to. If And after all those panels, uh, there's something. Something of the past, or some emptiness where you can add something new. So now you can see parts of the old chapel, parts of the stories of before. But they are not there anymore as a kind of a uh, something that com that's coming from above, eh? that you have to follow or to believe. It's a possibility. It's one of the stories of the world. There's also uh, a panel that you can open and look to the park, the green, the nature. And all the others are empty. So you can add new stories and you can add uh, new gods or saint, uh, uh, saints. Um, and in a way, in, in the, the change, the movement that's increased by, by that, uh, th that space is that uh, you're not looking for answers, but you have the place and the time to have questions. Well, uh, that, those monks were part of uh, a larger school um, environment. Yeah. Uh, and in a way, all the younger people and their teachers, uh, it's a kind of uh, an injection place. Once in a year, they are coming there. And now, it's, it's, it's uh, more people know that place. And a lot of people are coming. And they want to be there. Well, um, 
the handles are here as well there as there. So it's almost at the same uh, height. And uh, that's all also the only code that refers to the history of the place because uh, those handles so, are forming little crosses. Another um, project, you will see that there are a lot of projects in, let's say, more sacred context. That's because we are doing a lot of um, those projects. In Belgium, um, we have a lot of churches and monasteries, and they are uh, almost all abandoned. Uh, for example, in a city as Bruges, 25% uh, of the surface is religious heritage. So in 10 years, the identity of the city will be completely different if the city isn't f uh, making a kind of a vision uh, for uh, that heritage. And in the beginning, we had a lot of uh, projects that uh, where they asked us to activate the, that, that patrimony. But the strange thing is that uh, while doing all those projects, a lot of people are asking us to create new sacred spaces. That's very strange. I never thought that that would happen. But uh, that's a strange uh, evolution. And uh, I think 90% of the Belgian people are still living with the fact that they have a problem because our churches are becoming empty. And they are not aware of the fact that there is a new generation rising up who needs spiritual places, not really Catholic places anymore, but uh, spiritual places. And they need also... Um, rituals and so on. Uh, so uh, one of the problems, uh, um, let's say most of those churches are built for 800 people, 1,000 people, okay? and the parish now is 20, 30 people. So that's, of course, that's, that's crazy. Eh? You can't feel comfortable in such a place that's so big, if you will, with, with 20 people. Uh, and there's also a lack of community feeling. So um, a lot of parishes are uh, having a fusion and coming together. And um, they asked us uh, to change the one of the churches. Uh, so uh, three churches were disappearing and one church uh, stays. And I suggested to, um, to make of the change of the church a vehicle to form a new community. This, the new interior was not Again, not the goal, but the new community was the goal. Uh, but by changing the environment, there was, uh, it was visible, visible that uh, people were changing and the identity, the spiritual identity, could change. And uh, very strange, but um, there, was a, there was a nun who was a little bit uh, poking everybody and, and uh, uh, coordinating that process. And by asking to a lot of people, do you want to think with us about the new project uh, in the workshops? Uh, well, a lot of people, a lot of young people also, a lot of different people who wanted to cooperate. She was very surprised. And that group was almost bigger than the group of uh, people the Sunday morning. Um, and with the opening of that new project, 400 people were there. And from then on, every Sunday, 300 people came to the mass. So that was a surprising thing. Imagine that we um, took the assignment very literally, and say, okay, we have to design, that was what they asked us, design a place for 80 people. That would be a disaster from day one on. So what we designed was uh, almost nothing but uh, let's say, tapish surfaces, uh, two-dimensional, that you can remove very easily. Um, it's, a, it's a gray church, um, and the only colorful thing is the rosas up there. So we thought we will put there some um, circles uh, as the sun is always shining outside. Yeah. And you can... Uh, uh, throw those circles everywhere, or they, you can bring them together in a first a furniture, a first um, moment, a kind of a meeting point 
uh, before you go into the new chapel that was building in, uh, in that church. Um, and in a way, we just gave them tools to find out in which way they want to have their mess, they want to come together with the new community. It's nothing more than that. That's a more traditional way of working. But it's also possible. Another project is um, an elderly home, but a couple of elderly home, an institution, um, were asking us, we, we will build a new, um, a new uh, building for, let's say, for all the, the organizational parts of our, uh, of our work. So I think there were, there are uh, 10 buildings all over Belgium um, of the same organization, yeah? and they, they want to have one central building to do all the, the financial stuff and so. And they say, but we also want uh, a room uh, where people can come and work and discuss together uh, on questions that are not so easy to handle with. Uh, uh, they saw that uh, all the, the persons who was working there sometimes have questions that you can't answer or you can't deal very easily with. For example, questions of uh, euthanasia, questions of uh, privacy with all those elderly people, questions of sexuality. Um, and they say, uh, do you want to um, design for us a kind of a learning space in the new for the new building? Uh, and we had, I think, three years to develop that. Um, we suggested to uh, make a model one-to-one -one because we were asking what will you do there, who will come, how many time, and so on. They didn't know again. Yeah? It was uh, one big question. And we asked them if it was okay to uh, take a little bit money from uh, the, the budget of the real realization and to uh, build a model one-to-one -one and work there for two years and give us the, the the chance to every six months change something and, and uh, adapt something new. So uh, that's it's a kind of an experiment for all those people during two years to really better know what they want to uh, in the real building later on. But of course, uh, it's everywhere the same. We have no place, we have no money. But I don't believe that anymore. <laughs> that's for me, that's saying I don't want to do the effort, yeah? having no money of having or having no place. So we, we find somewhere an, an old library uh, that almost was never used. Yeah? And uh, we asked if we could put something there that you can um, bring down and create a space. And then if you don't need that learning space anymore, that you can put it away uh, and it's a library again. Um, the gift there was that there was upper light, so that was, uh, uh, in a way, we didn't have to do a lot of things. And uh, the yellow part is what we added. And in all those um, uh, surfaces, we put some curtains that you can ro roll down and roll up um, very easily. It's uh, from IKEA. Uh, so I think they needed uh, 1,500 euro to built that model one-to-one. -one. Um, here you see it. So we gave some color to give energy, and that's almost the only thing we did. And so you can see they can make the space. And they can make the space like a, a kind of a, a playing field. Yeah, you can, uh, it's like you, you play badminton or tennis or I, I don't know what. There is an inner space, an outer space. Um, it's white and dark uh, and so on. So in a way, the moment that they are coming together there to work or to have a debate or to discuss, first, the first thing they have to do is to make the space. And that's a very important ritual because all those people are coming from all over Belgium to work for a couple of hours together. And that's the first part, creating the space where they, they will work, is a kind of a way of uh, no, you, you can to learn to know each other. But you also have to think, uh, how do we want to use the space today? Or 
for the moment. And you can easily change it um, during the, the meeting or, or the workshop. And in a way, that's uh, now for them the chance to develop their uh, vision on what they want in a couple of years. And for me, there's not, it's not, uh, not about aesthetics or I, I don't know what. It's really I'm, I'm concerned about the people that they can discover something. Another uh, question we uh, ha have a lot of times is uh, we have a church, it's too big, uh, but we want to enter other uh, functions, social and cultural functions. So can you uh, divide the church in some parts? Eh? Uh, and um, do you want to take care that they are not disturbing each other? That's a question they asked us. So uh, there in Deinze, uh, that was the question, and uh, of course we did the first workshops with all the people around, people who were living around, uh, the schools from the neighborhood, the social parts, the political parts, everybody was sitting, uh, I think 14 people, that's a lot to, to, to work together. So, but all, everybody who, who is involved, more or less, was there for the workshops. Um, and the strange thing is, um, and maybe that's also an answer uh, on the question of this morning of, uh, of about the research by design. Uh, in the first moments, we uh, designed all kinds of spatial um, uh, possibilities, not to build, but to, to communicate with each other. And one of our uh, scenarios was um, uh, don't divide your, your um, church, but make it good again. Uh, uh, change the ch the, that church into a space, a spiritual space again, that everybody around uh, needs, not everybody, eh? a lot of people needs, that it has again his power, his energy to, to, um, to uh, inspire people and inspire also what's happening around. Um, and what we did in that image that was we built, instead of dividing here, we built all those social and cultural functions around, and uh, let's say the the wall here, we put it over there, and the wall from there, we put it over there. So we were changing the inside and the outside. Uh, you can see it now by the color. Eh? Um, but in a way, everything was a part of each other. So that was an interior architecture job that's, that was becoming more a landscape for a city uh, uh, commission. Um, and the st I was very surprised. I did that as kind of a joke to challenge them a little bit. And from, from the workshop two, they were all very enthusiastic about that scenario. So in a couple of hours, the commission changed completely from uh, something uh, hopeful instead of uh, you have to solve a problem. Yeah? And the interaction between all those people around the table became more uh, intensive. And I think that's one of the, the strengths of doing research by design, that you can um, imagine, you can design um, possibilities in the future, and all kinds of possibilities, impossible and possible, and then you can reflect on those scenarios and coming back on, on today. And uh, I'm sure, I, I, I feel that nowadays I'm uh, making completely other projects than before. And our clients are also um, thinking another way thanks to those scenarios. So there, the colored walls are, in a way, the walls of the building, eh, the cultural uh, building or the social buildings from our outside that we're, we are bringing into the church. And so we are uh, connecting all those uh, elements. Another private uh, project. Um, 
clients, a couple of clients who were asking us, they have a, a house building in, in say two parts, a front house and a, a, a house in the back of their garden. Um, and the problem was that there were, uh, was I think 16 meters between those two houses and they want to live in the both of them. Yeah. Um, so the first time we were there with two people, uh, a lady and, and, uh, and her husband, um, and we asked, uh, is this, they told us that they are a new composed family, you see it in English like that? Yeah? So they were, uh, before all, both of them were married, they had children from uh, another management and so on, and they were designing a new family in a way. And I felt, uh, I discovered, they were telling that uh, in the first moment, but I felt it because I was asking questions about their dreams and I felt that it was all unsure and, and they didn't know. They were also dreaming about it and, and trying out. And I asked them, next time, uh, can you bring all your children also to speak about it? Yeah, and old, old, older children and younger children. And then, at that moment, they, they said to their children, uh, I'm pregnant. Yeah, for the first time, with us there. Um, and so, of course, if you have such a strange, not strange, but new kind of um, family, you, you have to think in another way uh, about uh, space and about connections, and about privacy. And by I let them talking and talking and talking uh, for hours um, together. I, I was more sitting there, uh, sometimes asking a question. And um, on a certain moment, we proposed um, to make from the, the, let's say, the room between those two houses, um, the entry. And let's say a kind of the free space where everybody can put his memories, the things that are very um, uh, important, so there can be a picture of the mother of the other management, there can be a photo of a traveling before and so on. That's a free space, everything can be there. That's kind of a safety that and respect that they give to each other to say, okay, we all know that we had, we had a history before and we don't want that that history is fighting with the new future. So there will be a space for it. Um, I didn't uh, put that in, but it was coming up during the talks and let's say more or less the workshops. And the other thing is uh, that we created a kind of a walk from day to night and from night to day, from active to passive and passive to active. So in a way, for me, that was the first time I discovered I'm also creating sacred spaces in houses, not only in public space. Um, and I'm, I'm, I have the possibility to add and to, to people are, are um, willing to, to pay, let's say, eh, or to, to efforts for such a space, 60 meters long. Uh, and they will do it every day, more times than, than one, than once. And they, of course, don't know how the family will, will, will evaluate, and maybe they, they, they need some other people who are coming in to look for the children and so on. And for all those kind of scenarios, because at that moment we, we started to to create all kinds of scenarios because one of the children said, but maybe I want there's space enough, I want to live here with my uh, girlfriend. Is it also possible? And it became a kind of a little city uh, instead of uh, a family house for two persons and unknown children. And then the last project, uh, it's a project in my front garden. I think if you're changing the whole time other people's lives and you're interfering in other people's lives with comfort but also with challenge, you have also to do it in your own life uh, and to feel what is it if somebody is uh, uh, struggling with you or, uh, or challenged you. Um, and in a way, I've, uh, there are a lot of, um, the context is, um, I thought I'm, I'm building a lot of, of designing, a lot of sacred spaces. I also want to have one. Yeah. Uh, but for me alone, that's a pity thing. I will build my sacred space in my front garden and everybody is welcome there. And in a way, I had a front garden that was uh, 
larger than the other ones. So I had the space, I, I had to work there every week, uh, and, but I, I didn't do anything there. So I think that's a good uh, stuff. Also, I bought a house thinking that's a very quiet neighborhood and I will uh, meet uh, easily uh, my neighbors. But that's not true. There are a lot of people that passing through the street and we don't know each other very well. So I thought it's, it can also be a meeting point for all the people of the neighborhood. That's the project where failure uh, <laughs> is every year again uh, my, uh, let's say, the help for me to develop uh, my vision. Um, and so, uh, so every, every year I, I want to change it. I have a permission for four years uh, and then it has to disappear. That's also very good, I think. That you can do something, you go for it, and you know in four years it will disappear. Also good for the neighbors. Um, the first year I created, uh, let's say, an empty space between uh, two trees and uh, a little small door where you could go in. And the only thing you saw was the shadow of the tree. That was the movie you could see almost every day if there's sun, but there's a lot of sun. Um, and the emptiness. It's for me, it was space uh, to imagine, for the ima imagination. Um, and then there, there was a kind of uh, a little room, uh, an open room, uh, but also a screen to communicate uh, with the neighbors. And, before, and there, there are uh, all banks that everybody who wants to can pick in there. And uh, every day I put there fruit, fresh fruit and water. Um, I had a very um, good thing. Uh, normally there were four of those banks. There was one little bank also for children. They too, they too, they, uh, it, it's been stolen. I hadn't seen it, but my neighbors saw it. And Tom, what a pity. You are doing such a thing and after two days somebody is stealing your, your bank for children. How horrible. But in a way, that was a gift for me because all those people around suddenly were connected with a new project. Yeah, so next time I will <laughs> steal it myself. <laughs> no, no. Um, but uh, let's say uh, most of the time it was so empty as you see there. <laughs> people, Belgian people, they think, well, that's a private place. Uh, can I just take an apple? and uh, eat it without paying. Uh, um, I just had uh, one Italian neighbor, uh, woman that lives in the street. She was very enthusiastic and she uses the place. But of course, uh, the <laughs> people thought that she's crazy. And she's just an Italian woman. <laughs> um, so that was a gesture I did. The year after, I uh, took my students to work for half a year in uh, my house and they could change how they want. I was still paying my parents for that one and in instead they were changing it. So the year after they did research in the neighborhood, we were talking with uh, neighbors, uh, did all kind of uh, events for the neighbors um, and they did some changes. Uh, the door was disappeared to, to see also the house better and not to cover it by doors, but they put in it kind of a little house or chapel that you could move. And in that way, you could close uh, the emptiness uh, over there. They plant all kind, uh, all, all meant, a little uh, banks, and every time uh, there was uh, all kind of uh, tools to make uh, fresh menti the whole summer. Uh, but again, nobody came. And in July, I thought the mint was growing and growing. Uh, I put a little paper and I said, mint for free, for free mind. And at that moment, everybody came. It was for free. It was clear. They came to, to, to take the mint. But at that moment, I saw that people who were, because they are coming at 12 o'clock or, or if, if they need it, they were um, seeing each other and talking each other and to each other. And uh, also, um, what was not my intention, but what was happening, every time that I was working, working, in, uh, working in the garden, people were stopping and talking to me. They thought that guy 
yeah, if you if you build such a thing, that's somebody who wants to talk with me. <laughs> uh, so, but that was very uh, nice. Uh, uh, that was a way of uh, knowing better my my uh, neighbors. And also another thing um, is that uh, that's also a kind of the secret of the street. All the inhabitants of the street know what it is, and the others doesn't. So that brings them also together. They have a secret. And if somebody new is coming in the street, they have to tell it to him. And yeah, you, you can use it. They don't, it, they, they don't do it themselves, but they are uh, uh, encouraging people to, to use it. So it has more the, the power as a, a sign, as a code, than really as a place to, to be there. The year after, another uh, 30 students were working there, and they did something, in a way, I didn't like it very much, but uh, if you give something to somebody else, you have to give them the freedom. But I had to live for a year with something that was not really my uh, yeah, thing. They put the, that house in my back garden. And made, uh, because in my back garden I have a view on, on nature, no buildings, uh, so horses and foxes and so on. And they built a kind of uh, a zero star bed and breakfast. So not only my front garden became public, but also my back garden. Um, they made it more open, and also after the pavilion became public space. Coincidence is that at that moment, I met a Russian uh, woman and an Australian woman who were looking for one year to have a place to live in Belgium. And I said, okay. I'm, everything is almost public. Uh, I will give my house also for you. So the uh, first floor was their private space, and half of the house was public for everybody who was living there. So I lived with uh, five people, my uh, girlfriend and three children, in almost uh, yeah, one room. <laughs> and I thought that will be a problem, because I like very much my privacy, but it wasn't. It was very nice, and they were all talking to each other, and the dynamics of... of the experience was really very interesting. And after those two women disappeared, the children had uh, back their own room. I, I talked with them before. Uh, and at that moment, they start to argue, that's my room, that's my place. Uh, very strange. The moment they had more room, they start to argue. Before, they didn't. Another strange thing, uh, in a way, my house isn't designed for, for a lot of people, uh, because I just have one door, and <laughs> that's the door to the toilet. So to have uh, st uh, other people in the house, um, that was not so easy, but the codes to live in uh, were, were yeah, clear enough that we didn't interrupt each other. The only thing that, that I couldn't um, uh, conquer, that was the smell of the food. That Russian woman uh, made food with a lot of other um, herbs, and there was a very strange uh, uh, um, smell in the house. So if I was in my bed, I had the impression that that Russian woman was next to me, and that was not my intention. <laughs> so smell is something that was more on my privacy uh, than uh, the, vis the visible uh, things. So, uh, yeah. And then this year, uh, in two weeks, I will change again uh, the project. Uh, but now uh, it's up to me again. Uh, I make, uh, so that's, uh, that's standing uh, again. And from those uh, parts, I make a big, big, big table in between the trees, uh, banks. So a very normal, not abstract uh, code, but a table. You can sit there and, uh, and from the other, uh, from that part, I will add two um, orange-yellow windows. So if you are going to sit in it, it's like you're in heaven. Everything is uh, gold-colored. Um, um, so I hope that people will be very happy if they are there. Um, and then I asked to uh, a colleague of me, uh, an, an, an artist who is uh, making uh, books for children, he makes as well the stories as the drawings. And I said to him, um, uh, the whole uh, front garden is from now for a year is your book. You can, uh, during the year, uh, start to 
to make a story over there, to draw and, and to, to put some words or sentences. Uh, feel free, feel free. Uh, use it as your, your empty book to, to draw and to react on what's happening or not happening. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe in a year uh, we can take pictures of that part or we can uh, do kind of a theater or I don't know what. Uh, uh, but he will like a kind of a tattoo uh, interfere uh, on, the, on the space. And then next year it has to, to move. I have also a colleague who is doing a PhD on new rituals. And I will ask him to um, design a ritual to disappear uh, the last parts of uh, the pavilion. And that will be also the moment that I paid my, old, my parents back <laughs> after four years. Voilà, that was it. <laughs> Thank you. I figured one on my own. Uh, I was thinking uh, about uh, ex spiritual experiences and uh, why we do need a room for that. And then I started to think that uh, most Estonians go into the woods when they are looking for, or somewhere in the wild nature. Uh, and um, I think uh, s buildings like churches are meant for coming together, more like and uh, looking how other people dress and how they, uh, whatever. And it used to be, now maybe it's a little bit different, but uh, the problem is the same, that uh, not many people are visiting churches nowadays. And the uh, question is, uh, maybe we need more places like for gathering, as your uh, last project was. <laughs> or do you think that, uh, can it be that it's very different from example in Belgium. Uh, no, I think uh, do the people in your country need uh, uh, places for being alone, like this white chapel? Uh, I, I think they uh, need uh, both places, to be alone and to come together. But what I see is that, uh, and I wouldn't believe that, I wouldn't have believed that five years ago, that a lot of young people, they really need that kind of spaces uh, nowadays. So they are, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm not that religious as my parents are, eh? but I'm still educated in a very Catholic uh, way. But the younger people of today in Belgium, they, they aren't, so they don't know anything and they don't have uh, problems with it. They, for them, if they hear about a Catholic story or a Zen story, it's even interesting. Um, uh, but they, but uh, they don't need those religious, religious building anymore. But they still uh, have friends who are dying, or they still have pain. They still have dreams, and they feel that they need space for all those important feelings and parts of their life. And um, that's what I, what they need there. And also to come together, but also to be uh, alone. I think that those two uh, are important. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I really enjoyed your uh, investigations, and uh, I'm curious. I have so many students who are interested in making sacred spaces. As you know, they all make chapels or burial grounds, or wedding chapels and cities and so on. But you went further than that. You also made sacred spaces in houses. Yeah. You can do in supermarkets, parking garages, wherever, of course. Yeah. Uh, the way you expanded it. Uh, tell about your experience with the family when you talked about that, the brought <laughs> together family, and uh, uh, tell a little about also what your visions are about expanding that element of uh -huh. spirituality in our ordinary spaces and not just in the institutions mm -hmm. of spirit. Well, the story of that family, uh, it's, it has to be built in September now. So I can't tell you about how it works uh, afterwards, but um, I can tell another story. Uh, Two years ago, there were th there's a, a big festival in Belgium, Pukkelpop, uh, where thousands of people, younger people are coming, and there was a disaster because of the weather. 
and three people died. And the year after, they asked us to design a silent room in the middle of the festival. So if you would have asked, said to me five years ago, uh, in a couple of years, they will ask you from the festival uh, of Buckle Pop to design a silent space, it would be uh, impossible. And um, they had no money for it, and they didn't know what to do with it, and so on. Uh, so we, we created uh, with another uh, kind of uh, an empty space, white. In fact, it was uh, uh, silent, not uh, to hear, of course, but it was uh, visible silent. It was all white and, and nothing there. Um, and we put uh, all kind of ribbons, colored ribbons, and uh, people who are coming there, we could or write something down on it or hang it up on, on the, the, the nethers. And uh, what was happening, um, in four days, I think more than 1,000 younger people came there. And um, there was a, a transition from a white space into a colorful, uh, beautiful uh, festival space. And, and that was more a ritual. And then I, I, I saw not the space is so important, but the action, the things they can do there. Um, but yeah, I can't tell you about the, the, the family over there. Um, yeah, it's too early. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for your talk. Um, I really liked how you talked about the designer as a facilitator. And um, if it's not, um, uh, how do you say, like a business secret, then I would like to ask about the techniques or the methods you're using for actually in a design process. Yeah. And how have you managed to establish this to sell it to a client? Um, but I, I want to talk about it, but it's, I think, another lecture. But um, I uh, did a lot of courses during the last 10 years in the management context to uh, change management, uh, the, um, dealing with conflict situations, communication, and so on, to work with the group and to feel to, uh, to work bottom-up instead of uh, top-down. Um, but. There are a lot of techniques. I think every, it's, it's, those are also always workshops of uh, three hours. And in one workshop, I use maybe 10 or 12 techniques. Uh, if, if I see what's happening or if I see, oh, there's a conflict now, I have to, a conflict is a gift for me. Eh? I have to work with it. But, uh, because at that moment, everybody is involved and, and, and that's, that's uh, yeah, better and more interesting to, to work with them. But in a way, um, uh, there are a lot, uh, um, some actions. I want to deepening some keywords. I want to opening to broaden the possibilities of the people. I want to inspire them, uh, and I want to uh, break through patterns in their head. Those are the four uh, goals I have during the, the workshops. And uh, a sub question: Do you have uh, some other people besides designer in the team, like, or you are just working? Yeah. Well, I have a little team of three, four people, and uh, for every project I work with other people. So let's say the, the, yeah, the friends or other team members, are, that's a very uh, large number of people. Uh, and that can be from a social entry or a historical or pedagogical or philosophical, it's financial, uh, all kind of people. Yeah. That's very important. That's also, I have, the, so in, uh, so broadening, deepening, and so on, but always uh, um, playing on the people, on the identity, and the form, not only the form. It's, for me, it's very important that all those changes are starting a little bit, are, are, are encouraged at the same time to develop uh, at the same time. Otherwise, you have a conflict, and that's what you see with the change a lot of times. If you're doing a change without the other uh, changings, uh, then people are afraid or angry that you're changing something that uh, was from them, for example. A lot of chapels were built with the money 40, 50 years ago from the parents. Or, or uh. Thanks. Huh. 
anyone? Uh, when there are no more questions, I think we will take 10 minutes break and go on after that. Thank you. If it's okay.